بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولنذيقنهم من العذاب الأدنى دون العذاب الأكبر لعلهم يرجعون صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كل أمتي يدخلون الجنة إلا من أبا قيل ومن يأبى يا رسول الله قال من أتاني دخل الجنة ومن عصاني فقد أبى وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Respected علماء الكرام Elders beloved brothers in Islam As Muslims As reciters of kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم It is an integral inescapable part and dictate of our iman that should cause us to be extremely concerned and perturbed by the very difficult and the very trying phase or period through which the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam globally is passing through almost every day we receive news of atrocity of persecution of hardship of difficulty of suffering being experienced in some corner of the globe by some section of this ummah one scholar puts it quite succinctly, he says, such is the level of suffering that one feels that if even the rocks or stones had eyes, they also would begin to cry. To witness the plight of the ummah of the most beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the cause of greater concern? If you look into Quran and Hadith, the glowing terms in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to this ummah. وَكَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِنَّا لَنَنْصُرُ رُسُلَنَا وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْأَشْهَادِ وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَى آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلا نحي أنه حياة طيبة. All these verses and many more. What does Allah promise? Nusrat of Allah, help of Allah for this ummah. Is the dignity and honor for this ummah? Vice Presidency of this earth for this ummah. Barakat and blessings of the heavens and the earth for this ummah. حياة طيبة, pure life for this ummah. Look away from Quran. Look at the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How many ahadiths? Time is limited. Allah Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Wa inna hadhihi ummatum marhuma." This is that ummat upon which the special mercies of Allah are descending. Look at the annals of history of this ummat. What this ummat achieved in the past? Barely ten or twelve years had passed after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. During the Khilafat of Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radhiyallahu taala anhu, Islam had spread. To two million two hundred thousand square miles, four thousand jamia masajid had been established. Sixty, seventy, eighty years later, two thirds of the known world was covered in the light of Islam. However, look away from Quran, look away from Hadith, look away from the glowing annals of the history of what this ummah has achieved, and look at the pitiable, 
miserable picture that this ummah today presents. An ummah that is being kicked from pillar to post. An ummah that has no dignity or honor to its name. An ummah that is broken down into different groups and then splinter groups and then splinter groups. Where unity is something that has become something that totally doesn't exist. One wonders, is this the same ummah that Quran is speaking about? Is this the same ummah that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa praised in that manner? Is this the same ummah that achieved what was achieved in the past? Let us understand, my respected brothers, Quran is haq. Sadiq al Mastuk, Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not one word of lie or exaggeration passed through his Mubarak lips. The seven heavens and the seven earths can come to an end. My Nabi did not lie. Quran is haq, Hadith is haq. What has brought about this melody? What has brought about this downfall? Unfortunately, we find that in this modern era, or call it an advanced age, they are so-called enlightened thinkers, intellectuals, that have tried to address the melody and plight of this ummah, putting forward various ideas and theories, lack of military advancement, lack of scientific and technological advancement, lack of governments, lack of this, lack of that, various theories and ideas are being put forward as to what has brought about the downfall of this ummah. However, the fact of the matter, my respected brothers, any attempt, any attempt to address the plight of this ummah, having removed Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the equation will not solve the problem. It will in fact exacerbate and worsen the problem. Like one scholar puts it succinctly, Aaj ummat pareshani mein hai, aur is pareshani se nikalne ke liye, aise raaste astemal kar rahe, jisse pareshani barta hai. Today the ummat is in a plight, it is trying to address its melody in those avenues and directions which will in fact exacerbate and worsen its situation. All these theories and ideas that are being put, together, put forward, when they are weighed in the light of Quran and Hadith, when they are weighed in the light of that uloom which reached us from the arsh of Allah, through the agency of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will find that all these theories and ideas have absolutely no basis whatsoever in Quran and Hadith. Halat, conditions in this world, primarily are not in the control of any human being or any army or any technology. Halat and conditions in this world are primarily in the control of one Allah. وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا إِنَّ الْقُوَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرِ فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ مَا يَفْتَحِ اللَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ رَحْمَةٍ فَلَا مُمْسِكَ لَهَا وَمَا يُمْسِكَ فَلَا مُرْسِلَ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ إِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِالضُّرِّ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُوَ وَإِنْ يُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَّ لِفَضْلِهِ All these verses I've recited and many more. One basic message. No nation rises up or is brought down. No nation is harmed or benefited. No one advances or declines without the permission, kudrat, will and irada of one Allah. It is His hakimiyat, His hukumiyat, His samadiyat, His jabariyat that is controlling every facet of this creation. We want conditions to change. Come back to Allah. Come back. Come back to the principles of Quran. Come back to the way of life of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He caught hold of the hand of Abu Sufyan and addressed him. This address is not specific to Abu Sufyan. Ya Abu Sufyan, he said. Abu Sufyan only is not being addressed. Every reciter of Kalimat al Qiyamah is addressed. Every ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is addressed. Your Nabi, it is almost as if he caught hold of your hand. Ya Abu Sufyan, jittukum bi karamati dunya wal akhirah. I have brought that way of life. My day, my night. Jami'u ma jaabihi nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The way of life of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Camel age, space age, any age. I have brought that way of life that not only will give you the honor dignity of akhirat and the highest echelons of paradise i have brought that way of life that will give you the honor and dignity of this world also come back to quran and hadith 
come back to the way of life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith qudsi ahadith qudsi are those ahadith where in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah said Allah said in this ulama explained Allah's sunnah is explained Allah's system is explained Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah says إِنِّي إِذَا أُطِعْتُ رَضِيْتُ وَإِذَا رَضِيْتُ بَارَكْتُ وَلَيْسَ لِبَرَكَتِي نِهَايَا When I am obeyed, Allah says, when I am obeyed, I become happy. When I become happy, I set down my barakat and my blessings. وَلَيْسَ لِبَرَكَتِي نِهَايَا And there are no limit to my blessings. One was a period of time. Financially, Sahaba's situation was such, their homes were empty. They had stones tied to their stomach. Such a pitiable situation they were in. Yet, in the boiling heat of the sun, arduous labor, they were digging the khandak and the trench. The news had been received that the Confederate army had been formed that was coming towards Medina, that was going to wipe out the Muslims once and for all. Such a condition they were in, such a plight. Yet, what was the zeal? What was the motivation? What was the drive? نَحْنُ الَّذِينَ بَايَعُوا مُحَمَّدًا We are that jamaat and that group that has taken the oath of allegiance on the hands of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That as long as there is breath in our body, we will strive in the way of Allah. One sahabi comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he lifts up his kurta. وَبَطْنُهُ مَرْبُوتَةٌ بِحَجَرَ What is his situation? One stone is tied to his stomach to alleviate the pangs of hunger. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lifts up his own kurta. وَبَطْنُهُ مَرْبُوتَةٌ بِحَجَرَيْنِ It comes in the riwayat, two stones. Two stones are tied to the stomach of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jabir bin Abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, having witnessed this, he becomes concerned. He goes home to his wife, do we have any food? She says, all we have is a baby goat, a kid. If you slaughter it, it will be sufficient food for four or five people. Extend an exclusive invitation to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to partake of meals. Jabir goes, he whispers in the ears of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, there is da'wat for you and a few people. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stands up, Ya Ahl al-Khandaq, or Sahaba of Khandaq. There is an arm open invitation in the home of Jabir. Imagine, People that haven't eaten for days are not coming in tens and twenties, are coming in hundreds. Food is enough for four or five people. Jabir is concerned, he rushes home to his wife to tell her what has happened. Allahu Akbar. Allah's Rasul had made such an effort on the men, women and children of Medina Munawwara that every home was a markaz of Iman. What is the reaction of the wife of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu? When she hears what has happened, she says, the one who extended the invitation is responsible. We have nothing to worry about. I'm cutting the incident short. Allah's Rasulullah instructed them to prepare the food in a certain way. He himself blew in the pot. Sahaba came in groups of 10. 10 ate and went. 10 ate and went. And like this, the entire jamaat of Khandak ate stomach full and still the pot was full. This much is mashur, is famous in the books of hadith. There is an addition. Malik bin Sinan radiallahu ta'ala is the narrator. Allah ibn Kasir rahimullah has mentioned it in his kitab. That after this, Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa went to the pot. He read something and he blew. And that baby goat that had been sacrificed came to life again. Then Jabir, then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa presented this to Jabir. Jabir went into the house. The wife was shocked when she saw the baby kid and goat. What was the response? Jabir radiallahu ta'ala who said, this is the barakah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like this, like this tarikh and history is replete of incidents of Allah's barakat, Allah's blessings that were directed to this ummah when this ummah was fulfilling what Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted. Someone asked Jabir radiallahu ta'ala who how many people ate? How many people ate food that was sufficient for four or five? He said, we were 1500 in number. Walau kunna miyata alfin lakafana. But if we were 100,000 in number, then too it would have been sufficient. Walaysa li barakati nihaya. There are no limit to my blessings. On the other hand, Allah says, 
Nabi Islam says that Allah says, Inni idha usitu ghadibtu, wa idha ghadibtu laantu, wa inna laanata minni, tablughu sabi'a min al-wulb. O kama qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says, when I am disobeyed, when I am disobeyed, I become angry. And when I become angry, I send down my lanat and my curses. وَإِنَّ اللَّانَةَ مِنِّي تَبْلُغُ السَّابِعَ مِنَ الْوُلْدِ And my lanat and my curses will span seven generations. More than two centuries, this ummah is sinking lower and lower in a web of humiliation and disgrace, the like of which has never been seen in the annals of the history of this ummah. Tirmizi Sharif Riwayat, my respected brothers, listen with the ears of Iman. Don't listen to be entertained. Listen with the niyat of amal. Fifteen things my Nabi Salaam prophesied. He said when these fifteen things become apparent in the ummah, إِذَا اتُّخِذَ الْفَيْءُ دُوَلَا وَالْأَمَانَةُ مَغْنَمَا وَالزَّكَاةُ مَغْرَمَا وَتُعُلِّمَ لِغَيْرِ الدِّينِ وَأَطَعَ الرَّجُلُ إِمْرَانَتَهُ وَعَقَّ أُمَّهُ وَأَدْنَى صَدِيقَهُ وَأَقْصَى أَبَاهُ وَسَادَ الْف قبيلة فاسقهم وكان زعيم القوم أرذلهم وأكرم الرجل مخافة شره وشربت الخمور ولبست الحرير وظهرت القينات والمعازف ورفعت الأصوات في المساجد ولا نآخر هذه الأمة أولها 15 things he said first إذا تخذ الفي دولا he said when the wealth of the masses will be usurped by the ruling classes. In this is ishara, indication to a disparate distribution of wealth. Very few will be very wealthy, majority will be very poor. There will be a gap in between. Ulama say this, this refers to an economy that is based on riba and interest. Because wherever there is riba and interest, there will be a disproportionate distribution in wealth. Few will be very rich, the majority will be very poor, enslaved by those very few rich. This is the basic dictate of an economy and riba, of an economy and system of riba. One interpretation of this is that riba will become arm. Wal amanatu maghnama. Amanat dari, trustworthiness will no longer remain. When somebody wants something, he wants to procure the deal, he'll be smiling like a sheep. When it comes time to deliver on the promise, the same sheep becomes a wolf. There will be no weight to the zaban, the word of a Muslim. His honor will no longer remain. Lying, cheating, deceiving will become the order of the day. Wal amanatu maghnama, was zakatu maghrama. Zakat will be regarded as a burden and a tax. This is ishara not only to zakat. Allah's commands, even if they are fulfilled, instead of fulfilling them with the jazbah of iman, they will be fulfilled as if they are a burden. The knowledge of deen will be, will be acquired for worldly purposes. Relationships will no longer be based on brotherhood, but they will be based on matlab and motivation. Smile at him if you have some need for him. If you don't need him, then turn a sour face towards him. Ukrimar rajulu makhafat ashari. Like we say in layman's terms, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. Ukrimar rajulu makhafat ashari hi. Wa atar rajulu imratahu wa akka ummahu. Wa adna sadiqahu wa aqsa abahu. Men will become obedient to their wives. One was a period of time. Sahabi is going out, he's not going out in the path of Allah. He's going out to the marketplace to earn livelihood. From behind the wife will shout out, Iyaka wa kasbil haram, fa inna nasbiru ala al-ju' wa la nasbiru ala nari jahannam. She will say, beware of bringing haram into my home. I can make sabr on hunger, I will never be able to make sabr over the azab of jahannam. One was that period of time and the other is this period of time. Every season, the furniture must change. The lounge suite must match the carpet, the carpet must match the curtains. Functions, ceremonies, where israf, extravagance on a level which we can't even imagine is the order of the day. Behind it is what? Keeping up with the James and Jones of society. Like one person put it succinctly, buying things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. Such pressures are placed on the breadwinners that this ummah has become the living embodiment 
of that prophecy of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he said yati ala an-nas zamanun la yubali al-mar'u ma akhadha min al-halal am min al-haram he said a time will come upon my ummah they will not care where the earning and livelihood is coming from whether it is halal or haram will be of no consequence to them he said men will become obedient to their wives disobedient to their mothers how is it possible how is it possible my respected brothers in an ummah Allahu Akbar Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah great muhaddis he knew more than 100000 ahadith by heart one day he's kissing the feet of his mother mother is an elderly woman she becomes embarrassed her son is an imam thousands of students and he is kissing her feet she says my son what are you doing he says i am not kissing your feet i am kissing my jannat why because what did rasulullah sallallahu alaihi say if you want to find jannat if you want to find jannat where will you find it inna al-jannata tahta aqdam al-ummahat he says you will find jannat underneath the feet of your mother in an ummah with that talim and that teachings how is it that old age homes come into existence how is it that the mother ekes out whatever little remains of her existence in the outhouse the queen in the main house abject misery she undergoes towards the latter period of her life unable to voice her hurt for fear of repercussion from her own offspring men will become obedient to their wives disobedient to their mothers youngsters of my ummah will honor their friends they will look down upon their fathers on one occasion in the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam one youngster came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had a complaint what was his complaint he said ya rasulullah on occasion on occasion my father uses my wealth without my permission allah's rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam sends for the father this was the practice of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he wouldn't just listen to one side whenever a complaint came he would listen to both sides and that's a separate topic on its own unfortunately nowadays we have co- we are caught up in this bimari in the sickness of listening to only one side and forming conclusions the bisla some sense for the elderly father elderly man back bent over walking with a stick he's hurt his own son his own flesh and blood has complained about him to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam arabs poetry was an inherent part of their nature so he gives expression to his hurt and his pain in the form of a poem but he doesn't mention it to anyone he forms it in his heart as he is walking to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam before he can reach jibril has already come oh my nabi before you deal with this matter ask him what were the words that he formed in his heart the sahabi comes nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says to him what were the words that you formed in your heart he's shocked shay'an wallahi la yazalu allah yaziduna bika yaqinan ya rasulullah he says allah's qasam on nabi of allah allah continues to increase our yaqeen and conviction that you are definitely his nabi shay'an qultuhu fi nafsi ma sami'tu udunaya it was something i i said in my heart my own ears didn't hear it are you saying that my allah has heard it nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says yes what were the words that you formed in your heart he says ghadawtuka mauludan wa muntuka yafi'a tu'allu bima ajni alayka wa tunhalu wa idha laylatan daqatka bis saqm lam abit li saqmika illa sahiran atamalmalu ka'anni ana almatruq dunaka billadhi turiqta bihi duni fa'ini tahmalu takhafu arda nafsi alayka wa innaha la ta'lamu anna almauta waqtun mu'ajjalu falamma balaghta as-sinna wal ghayata allati ilayha madama kuntu fika u'amilu ja'alta jazaa'i ghildatan wa fadhadatan ka'annaka anta almun'im almutafaddilu falaytaka illa lam taru haqqa ubuwwati fa'alta kama aljaru almujawir yaf'alu fa'ulaytani haqqa aljiwari wa lam takun alayya bimalin duna malika tabkhalu allah's qasam my respected brothers it is impossible in any language to do justice to translating and explaining the pain contained in these expressions suffice to say the effect of what he said was such that like rain droplets the tears were pouring down the cheeks of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the crux of what he said he said oh my beloved son from a young age i nurtured you in order to cause your flower to bloom my own flower ebbed i stood in the boiling heat of the sun 
and underwent untold difficulties and hardships so that your every womb, ambition and hope and aspiration could be fulfilled. Oh my son, when you became sick, it was as if I became sick with you, I would stand at your bedside and I would cry to my Allah, oh my Allah, let him not die, let him not die, whilst I knew that death could only come upon its appointed time. Then what happened? Oh my son, you grew up. Youth caused your flower to bloom while, oh, whilst old age caused my flower to wither. Youth caused you to be filled with ebullience and strength whilst old age sapped my energy and caused my bones to become frail and bent. In this moment of weakness and dependence, I stretched my hand out to you, yet you reacted with such arrogance and such harshness that it appeared to me as if my entire life was a lie and that you had brought me up and I had not brought you up. Oh my son, if you couldn't have been a son to me, at least you could have been a neighbor to me because a neighbor to some extent considers the right of his neighbor. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he heard this heart rendering words, he caught hold of the collar of that youngster and he said, Idhab, go away from here. Anta wa maluka li abika. You and your well belong to your father. Atar rajulu imratahu wa aqqa ummahu. Adana sadiqahu wa aqsa abahu. He said, the youngsters of my ummah will venerate and honor their friends. They will look down upon their fathers. The leaders of society will become morally decrepit individuals. They will be given positions of trust and, lead and, and leadership. People who have no morality whatsoever will be idolized and looked up, looked up to. My respected brothers, even on the occasion of Jumu'ah, some of our youngsters come with t-shirts to the masjid. Sports personalities, music personalities, this, this, emblazoned on those t-shirts. People whose every day, every day is in sharab, every night is in zina, idolized and looked up to. We are the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our Imam, our guide, our Hadi, our Rehber is supposed to be Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What qurbani and sacrifice didn't he undergo for our sake? He said voices would be raised in the masjids, masjids will become places of argument. He said musical instruments will become the order of the day. Youngsters moving around in fast, fast cars, woofers, subwoofers, tweet tweeters, bodies jiving to the music. My respected brothers, why don't we consider what will happen if an accident occurs? What happens if my moth is written at that time? What will my hasha be in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said silk will be worn. In this is ishara, indication that males will imitate females. In the name of gender equality today, what is going on? In the name of gender equality, males are imitating females so that you can't understand or establish the difference between the two. He said the last section of this ummah will curse the first section of the ummah. They will say that is the camel age, this is the space age. They were backwards, we are enlightened thinkers. Allah's Rasul said, when these 15 things become apparent in my ummah, He said, when these 15 things become apparent, then wait. Wait for the winds to change direction. Wait for climate change to occur. Wait for red winds to blow. Wait for tsunamis to occur. Wait for earthquakes to occur. Wait for the whip of Allah's azab to strike against this ummah. Why? Because this ummah, by its own hand, has signed the writ and declaration of war with Allah. How do we hope to succeed in such a war? Allah says we will make you taste in this world a small azab. My respected brothers, whatever is going on is still a small azab compared to the azab of akhirat. And not because Allah has forsaken us, Allah loves us. Allah loves us a mother. There are no comparisons or parables with Allah. A mother, despite her motherly love and affection, sometimes punishes her child. Why? What is driving it? The motherly love and affection in the heart so that this child will change. Allah says, Halat in this world will come. What is the reason behind this? Not that Allah has forsaken you, but so that you come back to Allah. Knock the door of Tawbah. Come into the masjid. Juma Salah. There's no space. They had to leave space as we drove in. I asked the brother, I said, why are you not parking there? They said, no. The mats also will go there. 
After this Juma Salah, as the brother is walking out of the masjid, tap him on the shoulder and ask him, Brother, next week Juma Salah, are you coming? And say, Of course, how can you even ask me a question like that? Are you casting aspersions on my character? Then in a softer voice, ask the same brother by Asr Salah. Just now will be Azan for Asr. Asr Salah, are you coming? He'll say, Inshallah, make dua. As if only Juma is far. Allah's Muazzin is calling out, Allahu Akbar. What does Allahu Akbar mean? Wallah, there is no siren, no authority in this world that can equal the authority of this call. Allahu Akbar. Every breath of air in your body is owed to Allah. Every beating of this heart is owed to Allah. Every existence in this world is owed to Allah. It is His right. Today we are making dushmani. Today we have turned our backs on Allah. Our problem doesn't lie elsewhere. Come out of this fallacy blaming others. Introspect, look, look within ourselves. Quran and Hadith teaches us the first khutbah that Rasulullah gave in Medina Munawara. What did he say? In his first khutbah, Man aslaha ma baynahu wa bayn Allah. Aslaha Allahu ma baynahu wa bayn khalqi. He said, correct your relationship with Allah. Correct your relationship with Allah. Allah will correct your relationship with the rest of the creation. Don't blame others and look elsewhere. Introspect, look within yourself. Is my day the day of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Is my heart beating with the compassion and concern for humanity that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had? Am I an embodiment of that akhlaq and character of Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam? These are the critical questions, my respected brothers. Halat and conditions will change when this ummah, on an individual and a collective level, will address this. The doors of Allah's mercy are open. Allah is waiting. Who is it that is going to come back to Allah and hold the hand of one one person and bring them back to Allah? This Jamaat that is going around, this Ishtimaz that are going to take place, inshallah, next month, 30th of March, Ishtima will be taking place in Brisbane. Behind it, this is not a political organization. There's no agenda. Not here to increase membership of some organization. No, this is a call, this is a cry that come back to the way of life of Rasulullah. Come back to what my Nabi's day was, what his night was. The clock of our life is ticking, the door of Tawbah is open. Repent, come back to Allah. May Allah give us tawfiq wa akhidhan to you.